Welcome to another episode of Let's Eat Orlando with Amy, Drew, and Biggie. Uh, this week, we're talking uh, foodie awards. Orlando Sentinel Foodie Awards. Um, Hardest part of my job. <laughs> that is part the, of my job. That is the, definitely the topic we're going to be talking about. I kind of wanted to find out a little bit more about how that process goes um, in selections, dealing with that, dealing with the, the nominations. Um, and then we're going to talk about some of the selections that were selected so far. Uh Amy Drew, out of curiosity, I know this year you guys changed the format. Uh, the Orlando Sentinel changed the format, um, made it more, you know, you kind of explain a little bit more like how the idea of it. I mean, I think it's a great concept. I mean, obviously, it maybe some need some more tweaking, but I think it's a great, uh, a great idea. What, what are they doing now? Well, the awards perspective, right? The awards, the first year that the Orlando Sentinel did the Foodie Awards, I was 26 years old. <laughs> so it was a while ago. Um, I've been doing it since I got this job, which is a little less than five years ago. Um, the only real significant change that I, I, I don't want to say I insisted on it because they could have said no, but was to put chains in their own category. And you and I had this discussion and you were like, people just say, Oh, Chipotle, <laughs> you said that. Yeah. And yeah, I just, I didn't want Chipotle to be able to win against a local restaurant. I, while chains are important, I know people love their chain restaurants. They can love whatever fast food they want. I think it's great. Yep. Um, I discuss fast food and garbage food with top chefs all over the city, but they should be in their own category. So we made a chain restaurant category so that anybody who nominates Golden Corral for best restaurant, no, it's only allowed to be voted for in the best chain category. But the nomination process really is completely out of my hands. The reader's choice stuff is totally, has nothing to do with me. That's all, you know, independent votes. And then you, the way you guys set it up this time was you guys kind of did it almost like, I, I would say like bite-sized category. So not all of them are at once. Like right now, I think there's, I forget how many they are, but it's like, I would say it's more like the, casual more like the casual world of like you know between barbecue and like brewery burgers cheap eats donuts food truck pizza sandwich seafood sushi uh taco takeout vegan and new restaurant like is the first uh wave and then there's going to be more of them right is how they, you guys are, are looking to do it so there's like more people can yes. yeah we decided to try to break it out because the foodies in the past have had 50 categories and for me, that meant one winner and two runners up. So like 300 restaurants. And it's a lot to digest at once, you know, pun not intended, but intended. Um, and you didn't get a lot of heavy visibility and it was a big job. And, you know, so we just decided, you know, why not break it out? So, yeah, so these, this first round of categories included the two biggies that'll be one, you know, one time a year, which is the best new restaurant and the restaurant of the year, plus these sort of tried and trues, burgers, tacos, wings, you know, things that are just sort of more generic and then breaking it out into other categories. So it's just more digestible and what we're going to be doing, and it hasn't landed yet, but it'll be out online tomorrow, which will, I guess will be already out by the time this podcast drops, is that instead of doing runners up, we're going to do, and by the way, here are three more great places for burgers or three or four honorable more. Honorable mentions. Yes, exactly. Because it really is, in the end, it's so subjective. But because of the nature of this gig, you know, they're forcing me, this is the way it's done. I have to pick one, but it's really hard because there's 10, 20, there could be 20 places that have a best burger level burger and I can't pick 20. So, you know, so this is just a way to make sure that the, what I would call the sort of the runners up get more space. They get pictures, they get words instead of just here's the name of the restaurant and here's the address. Yeah. And no, I, I, I think, I think it's better for, for them and, and more fun because we get to showcase, you know, four burgers or four places for burgers instead of just one. And obviously that means more work for you as well. Four times more work. It's more work, but spread out in a more manageable, I hope way. Yeah. We'll see. 
We'll yeah. see how it goes. So look for Q2 to drop in June. I love so that, that and I love that. I love that you guys have broken it down that way. It's a lot easier. What um how difficult is it to pick like a winner when you're kind of going through some of these? Like you know what I mean? Like when you're trying to do it, like do you take it's into so effect? Hard. Do you take into a, a, into account things like, um, I don't know, anything like, hey, who did I select? Like, do you look back and be like, who did I select last year or the last few Sometimes, years? Sometimes, yeah. I've, I mean, I've not picked the same place for burger any year because there are so many good ones out there. I just feel like there's no need. Yeah. Um. I really, I, this year I suggested a hall of fame. Can we make a hall of fame and just retire people and put them in the hall of fame? I'm not sure that they'll go for that, but, um, you know, it's, it's in, it's, it's in my, you know, you know, let them be able to claim hall of fame and then I yeah. don't have to, yeah. you know, then it allows for new spaces, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I could see them liking it and disliking it because a, a place would be like, hey, I know I'm in the Hall of Fame, but I don't want to be forgotten. I like being mentioned in the I like my restaurant being mentioned in the in in the newspaper. Right. Um, right. Do you want to go over some of these categories um, that currently have? I can kind of give you uh, I can go over some of the names of some of the places and we can kind of chat a little bit about it. I could even then maybe I can. If you're interested, I can give you who I would have picked. Yeah, or... it's, it's subjective. That's the whole thing. And like, and I just as easily as you could be like, oh, Primrose Lanes has an amazing burger. You know who else does? Yeah, I know they yeah. do because I have no choice. I have to pick one. You know, in the end, it's like that's what has to happen. Sometimes it comes down to just you just got to pick. There's a deadline yeah. and yeah. I have to pick. No, you know. I, and I think that's the part where I think I, so I, I enjoyed looking at it cause I went over the, the paper I was looking it's over the Highlander. I yeah, like it. I was going through everything and I was kind of seeing, you know, your selection and then the reader's choice. It was interesting to see which ones were I like kind of matched. I did notice some things where nominations on some cases, like the same type of places, almost like they got ahead of themselves or were able to add themselves to many categories so it was that part i thought was interesting on the nomination side of it where i was like oh this restaurant didn't make it but i'm like i wonder if they even got to nominate themselves because maybe the window of time wasn't in long enough uh so i don't know it, either way i think you there's a great it's a great list of uh of places um the first one i saw because i did it kind of alphabetical was barbecue uh and tough one every year Every year, so hard. Every year, one of the hardest categories. No matter who I pick, I am angry that I couldn't pick more places. I, it almost becomes the the. It's almost like the pick becomes at least in my in my mind. It's it must be difficult. It got. I, it has to be difficult. But in my mind, I almost think to myself, I'm like, what? Not that it would be my selection, but if I were to eat at one of those places, it would be like, which one am I closest to? Like the, you're yeah, an and I like think it, that, that for a lot of people, it would be like that. I don't pick them like that because correct. I'm speaking for the Metro, correct. but it's still, but it doesn't matter. It still correct. doesn't matter. Last year, my pick, um, was granny Southern smokehouse, which won reader's choice this yep. year. I saw they that. are just as worthy this year to be my pick as briskets. Um, granny's is down in St. Cloud. Yes. Kiss to me, St. Cloud, yep. St. Cloud. And briskets is up in Oviedo. Yep. Both of them are super worthy. Granny's is no less good than it was last year. Correct. It's just a matter of there are so many places. And there and this year I tried a lot of great new barbecue and I still didn't even try all the new barbecue. Yep. So there are places that I could have picked that I haven't even gotten a chance to try yet. And so I'm hoping that's another thing is that I'm hoping that breaking them out this year will make it easier for me to try more places throughout the year so that I have a greater pool in my, you know, in my Rolodex, if you yeah. will, to, to choose from. So I, it's funny that because I did eat at briskets and barbecue, I remember texting you and telling you, and you're like, I wrote about them already. And then I looked and I saw, it, and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> 
I was like, I just told her about this place. I'm like, of course. I'm like, that's kind of, that, I, I, and I do love them. I mean, there's a lot of, like you said, there is tons of barbecue places that are, are just phenomenal. And, and, a lot and, of times- and let me tell you, it came down to the wire. It came down to the wire who I was going to put in the number one slot because really it, who the people who I didn't pick belong there just as much. It's really, there are so many good places, but there can be only one. And more places are coming. More barbecue places are coming. Like, I mean, you know, between yes, Hinkley's yes. and Smoke Made Meats, all those places are opening up, uh, you know, and like you got- Smoke then- Made Meats won, I think, two huh? years ago as a pop-up. Huh? I think huh? that I gave them the number one. I'm pretty sure that they were my critics yeah. pick two years ago, and- even without a storefront. Those and those are and those are some places that I like will go to. I'll go to smoke uh, smoking donuts. Uh, we have, they make a great uh, great food there as well. I'll do uh, you know love their pig, brisket. Yes, love the brisket. Yes, there. and I'll do like pig Floyd's. I'll do Buen Fuegos. Uh, you know, and there's so many of them. Pig I will... Floyd's I think was my first year. The first yep. year I did the foodies, pig Floyd's was my pick. So it's like, yeah. see, these places are yeah. good and they stay good. Correct. Correct. I will say I agree because I did have the I enjoyed the briskets. I actually use, ate that during Super Bowl um, Sunday. I used the leftover briskets from briskets and barbecue um, and used the made myself like a sandwich with like sourdough bread. I made like a bar, uh, Super Bowl sandwich uh, and I used it and their brisket mm. was amazing. Their desserts were amazing. Um, definitely a good one. Uh, yeah, they pick. do house made desserts. I love that. Yes. I love that it's a little shack. And and I was going to say, I would think that you would like briskets because even though this isn't the thing that I gravitate towards on the menu, briskets has a lot of sandwiches. Uh huh. Yes. They have a lot of funky barbecue sandwiches yes. on and their it, menu. It's... I'm, I'm, I tend to be purist. Like, I just want to eat chicken or brisket or sausage. So I do. I will tell you this. Um, when I go to a barbecue place the first time, I actually don't go sandwich. I do exactly right. what you did. I do give me the barbecue. I want to taste it. I want to know what it mm-hmm. tastes like. Do I need sauce? That's the other thing I'm like, I want to know. I'm like, is it so good that I don't need sauce or do I need sauce? And like, those are the elements that I kind of look at. Uh, so yeah, I'm exactly the same way. Like the next time I go, I will just get a brisket sandwich um, at you know, when I go to briskets and barbecue, because that's usually usually what I kind of go towards. Um, the other the other big one, and we won't go through all of them because obviously it'll take forever. Uh, but like some other ones that I thought were interesting, like uh, you're obviously your burger, like you mentioned, uh, you pick the Primrose uh, burger. I know Hangry Bison got Reader's Choice um, as as that. For me, I I. I've been, I've, I kind of gravitate. I, you know, I, I do think there's a lot of good burger places and you really can't go wrong with all the different great burger places, but I always, I kind of do like the swine and sons, uh, burger, the one with all the onions. They have been in my mix in yes. past foodie awards. Yeah. Um, definitely. I like, they had one and I can't remember, but I think it was onions and blue cheese and, mm-hmm. and I was all for that one. I remember yeah. loving that one. What, um, what so was- yeah, these are great. What was it that you loved about the Primrose Burger? I think what I love about the Primrose Burger is that it's so classic. It's, you know, gooey American cheese. It's smash burger. So it has the crisp edges, but it's a double patty. It's kind of like, it's like what fast food burgers that you love could be if they were like 500%. Yes. And Primrose Lanes, they do these pickles in house that are gingery and i love the thin i'm a i'm crazy about pickles on hamburgers and i love their pickles so i think that it was a combination of that this is what like a mcdonald's double cheeseburger could be if like it was like the mcdonald's in heaven <laughs> <laughs> does that make sense yes yes no i love that i it's think that's great the onions you know, I don't like it when people back away from onions because so many people are like, I don't like onions. You know, no, onions are good. Eat is, those. Eat those onions- and share them with your partner and both of you have onions and it cancels it out. I love it. Are, does, <laughs> is the onion sautéed or are the onions raw onions? No, no, no. I believe that they're caramelized. Oh, okay, I'd have to okay. look it up because we're, oh. I, I mean, I just, I actually just did a piece on other burgers, ancillary, uh-huh. as a follow-up to Primrose Lane's winning. Talk about it. So, so some of my other favorite burgers, and I'm telling you, this one is so good. The Loco Moco Burger at Sweet and Salty Island Grinds is like my heart. 
I mean, my heart is obviously clogged and ready to explode, but, but it is my heart. Um, Loco Moco, if you're not familiar with it, is this classic Hawaiian plate lunch dish. It's like a hamburger on rice because everything is rice and there's gravy on it and a fried egg. And that's Loco Moco. And oh. they have taken this dish and turned it into a burger a double patty smash burger with the gravy and the fried egg and chef will makes this like fresh garlic aioli that you can taste even in the middle of all of that stuff. Like you're like, where is that garlic coming from? It's just so good. And you get the gravy, you get that pop of the egg with the yolk. I don't know if you're a fried egg person. Uh, I... like, everything is better with a fried egg on it. Like chocolate cake would be better with a fried. <laughs> you love. <laughs> I I will say that I've learned that you love chocolate cake because you put a lot of weird things on top of it. No, I just uh, use that as an example because know, chocolate cake is like this universally yeah. loved thing. Does it have rice? That does this burger have rice as well? No, it does it? not have okay. rice. It has like a brioche bun. Okay. Yeah, it's a brioche bun, that. which is that's why Locomoco. I like it, but it was never one of my favorite plate lunch food yeah. but as a burger it's like next level oh it's next level so that's one of my favorite burgers in town this year um over at the classic i don't know if you've been to the classic in thornton park no they are doing crazy good burgers over there with the toasted bun which is everything simple but then they do these great burgers of the day or burgers of the week or whatever their specials are they haven't repeated any of them that are like nuts so like you could always go there and get the classic cheeseburger, but you could also get some kind of crazy taco inspired burger nice. or some sort of beer cheese smothered burger on rye bread melt, you know, pressed or Sounds they're just amazing. doing, they're just doing nuts, nuts of stuff over there, but they have the classic and, and those burgers are really good. And what was my third one? I'm trying to remember. Oh, Poppy Smash downtown. Oh, yeah. Latin burgers. Latin inspired burgers. With so you've got the Maduros like mm -hmm. and the chimichurri and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. And those are amazing. Those are yeah. amazing. So the, those, that's just three places outside of Primrose Lanes where the burgers are just, they're awesome. They're yeah. all great. You know, no, I, I love that. What about, I, I saw like your, uh, the donut one, I, I, to, um, I'm a, I kind of side more with the, the readers, but I will never say no to a DG donut. Well, who uh, did the readers I, pick this year? Was it Donut King? Donut King. Yeah. Donut King yeah. has been my pick for like three yeah. years running. Yeah. I mean, you can't so really go wrong. I just felt wrong. like I needed to spread nope. love a I, little I, bit. I totally agree with that. Like yeah. you really can't go wrong. They make amazing donuts. So it's just in reality, it's really like, who am I closest to? Oh, I'm near DG. Yeah. Go to DG. I'm near, yeah. I'm near Donut I'm King. I'm not near DG. I go no, to Donut I'm King not. way more, yes. way more often than I yes. go to DG, but DG, man, those apple fritters, they're like the size of your head. Head. Yes. Oh, it's have so you good. seen those? I'm not yeah. even exaggerating. They're I like have... the size of a plate. Like four oh. people could share that. Hmm. So good. All this yeah. talk, food talk, gets me. Food right. Truck, this uh... is, yeah. This is like yeah. my whole life. I, <laughs> I have to go on the treadmill just after talking. Just like talking about it. Food truck. Yeah. Food truck wise, uh, I know Red Panda. That's Red two pa years in a row for yeah. me. Red Pandas. They really make some killer killer stuff i loved in the article reading um the fact that um my favorite thing to eat sandwiches may be coming back in a different in a form from them uh, i know they've done sandwiches on the truck but i you know concept coming uh in the future so i'm uh i'm super excited about that there um, are so many good food trucks i need to just say that there are so many good food trucks out there I gave, I picked them two years in a row because they're just so creative and they're so different and really they should be a restaurant. And I yeah. hope that one day they are, yep. um, they put so much care into what they do. They work so hard to make the food good. Um, like really on an artist level, mm -hmm. I think, you know, and they want you to love it. Like yeah. it's their art. And if you don't, I think it hurts their hearts. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, they, they Seth and Elliot do a uh, hell of a job uh, in the team. They do a, a great job on it. And it, the great thing about it is you can go to like a Tasty Tuesday or whenever you – like the great thing about them is that when they're selling at a lot of these things, these events, there's other food trucks there. So it's like a perfect excuse to go see yeah. those. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Those other so you can trucks. have that and share one of their dishes and then go. Yep, which is usually kind of how we play the game when we go um, eat at food trucks for sure. Um Pizza. It's just a I, place that I think I wanted more people to look at who maybe didn't know about them. Yeah. No, before. I love that. Because again, we're we're in it. So it's like people go, you know, the people who are friends with you and me are like Red Panda again. But like yeah. there are so many people who read these things that don't know. They just Correct. don't. You have to understand. Not everybody is us. They don't pay yeah. as much attention as we do. And this is the reason why we're doing this is because we want to yeah. highlight those places and, and remind you yeah. to go go outside your comfort zone and, and check those places out. Um Pizza, you pick Soto Soto Square, which is great, uh, great pizza. Uh, I always enjoy. I have to defend their... that choice against my homies back home. Oh, oh why? Because it's How Detroit style pizza. How could you pick Detroit? Pizza. How could you pick a Detroit place over New York? Because it's good. That's yeah. Because it's really good. Exactly. I no. I I I enjoy them. My pick. Uh, my pick. Obviously, I do. I do enjoy pizza. I know I'm a sandwich guy. Um, I'm. I my. I usually tend to go Black Magic Pizza. Um, is one of my favorites. You're um, telegraphing. How, when yeah. is this going to come out? Oh, it'll come out. It'll, you know, I don't know. We'll come out in a few weeks because remember, we still need an oh. intro and all that other stuff. Okay, so you got great, time. You got time. Black Magic is my review this week. Are you That's going to drop in two days. And I am a new, huge fan of Black Magic. Yeah. I cannot believe it took me this long to get there. That's how hard this job is. Yeah. They are out of sight. Without I, uh, a doubt. So, so, and obviously there's a partial, I have a partialness to them because one, I was there like at their first pop-ups. So I've been there since the beginning at their first pop-ups. Um, Travis and Elizabeth and the team are just phenomenal and just seeing what they've been able to, the hustle and what they've been able to do. Um, my entire family pretty much like loves their pizza. So we end up like, I can't wait for when they have the larger pies because we pretty much are buying, you know, three or four pies and we usually go for like their wing their wing wednesday uh when they do that we'll get their wings as well because we love their wings whenever we can we'll get wings and pizza um when they make them that dough i'm all about the crust i'm all about the dough before anything else and that dough is again much like i said about red panda there is care and love in that dough. There is so much flavor in that dough. There are so many places that, you know, they make a good pizza, but the dough doesn't really taste like anything. It's kind of just like the edible plate that you, but this is really good pizza. The dough is there and this dough is just, they do a phenomenal job. They care. So the other category, which obviously is my favorite category is the sandwich category. And uh, and uh, you picked Hinkley's. I have uh, picked Hinkley's, I think, four out of three out of four times or four out of five. I picked Stasio's one year. There are a lot of really good contenders. I love Stasio's. They make their own bread. And I love Stasio's. It's just, it's just like every other category. Like, there are so many good contenders. But Hinkley's is, I don't know, it's just special. He does yeah. such good stuff. And it's funny because Stasio's is the reader's pick. Um, the readers is, are getting better. Yeah, <laughs> they are. No, I I I agree with that. Now, the last few years, I've seen way more picks on the reader side that I would actually pick myself. Well, and that's good. I mean, yeah. that's exactly that's exactly what you want. Now, of course, obviously, I love since I love sandwiches so much. I figured we kind of all the picks are great. Hinkley's a phenomenal. Stasio's. I'll never say no to any of these places. And I haven't done my follow-up yet on that. So I will yes. do a sandwich follow-up that'll include at least three other places that I think are amazing. Yes. Which I obviously can't wait to hear about, but I want to talk about, and maybe you give, maybe, maybe they might be in the story when we talk about this. Cause I wanted to kind of ask you uh, a little bit more specific breakfast or sandwich questions. Like, what is your favorite breakfast sandwich in Orlando? In oh well, you know the funny thing is, is that I still haven't found a place, and I don't know what it is that can perfectly replicate the New York egg sandwich. However, Stasio's, I went to Stasio's, and they made me a, an egg provolone sausage and broccoli rob sandwich. 
that if you go through my Instagram, if anybody's out there, if you're patient enough to scroll back, you will see it. This sandwich is so outstanding. It's not on the menu. I just ordered it. Oh my God, I could eat that every day, except that in about a week and a half, I would need a cardiologist, <laughs> but it's so good. Yeah, I uh, I I agree. I think for me, Stasio's, obviously, I'll, yeah. I'll always tell people, go get a breakfast sandwich at Stasio's. Yes. The bread's made in-house. Yes. Um, you know, you can do, they'll even do the, the sausage is made in-house, and they'll do like the sausage. I do the Taylor ham pork roll version um, is what I Jersey usually version. order. Yeah, I go Jersey version. Uh, the other one, I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm never going to say no to a chicken biscuit. Um, any place that sells a chicken biscuit, I pretty much will eat. So I will, yes, I'll eat Chick Fil A. I'll go to and I'll, I'll, I'll go to Seven Bites and get theirs. Uh, so you really can't go wrong with that. I'm super picky with biscuits. Like I just, it has to be per- just in the end. I feel like no, like it just feels like flour because I think that most biscuits just aren't that good. Yeah. And like even the good ones, I'd rather have like a Kaiser roll for my breakfast sandwich. Out of curiosity, I don't even like bagel sandwiches. I don't. I like different things on bagels. Okay, okay. So, do you like a bit? Is there a biscuit that you like? I mean, I've had biscuits that I would eat, and I like them. But usually, I like you know, like well, actually, Seven Bites makes such good sausage gravy, which is another thing that I usually don't like because I don't think most places do it well. Yeah. So I'm always prepared to not like the sausage gravy. Seven mm-hmm. Bites has good sausage gravy. So, yeah. and that's why they put it on biscuits because most biscuits are not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think this may be a topic, a future topic of biscuits definitely, and bread. Definitely. Bread would, and biscuits. Yeah. Yes. I w- if I had one that I love, my daughter loves biscuits. She's super into them. I just, they're just okay. Like, and okay. most of them are not good. Like the, I, I, I'm waiting for one to make me like, oh my God, I could eat this for the rest of my life. I will say that for me, I, when, when I have a chicken biscuit, I want, I expect the chicken biscuit to be something where I can actually eat like a sandwich. I do not, I do not intend to use a fork and knife. So if that, I mean, I'll still eat it with a fork and knife. Yeah. It can't be too crumbly. It's got to have structural integrity, all those good things. What about, uh, since we're, since I'm going to be, I'm going specific on sandwich and we're only going to do a few because obviously we have other, we have a few other things to talk about, uh, like other handheld foods, but do you have a, a favorite cold sandwich? I, <laughs> you know, what I'm going to say I like, I like a lot cold sandwiches. Um, I love a good classic, like Italian hero with all the, you know, awesome, greasy mm-hmm. salami and kappa and all the good and provolone. There has to be provolone or it's not right. Um, I like mortadella, which my friend who worked in the deli would always call marshmallow bologna. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So that's what I always call it. I like mortadella and I like bologna. I don't care what anyone says. I like bologna sandwiches and they're good. And I like it cold. In Brazil, they make the mortadella hot and I'll eat it, but I honestly prefer it cold. So where, where would you eat a cold sandwich in Orlando? I mean, I'd eat a sandwich just about anywhere in Orlando. I know. You know, I'll eat a pub sub. Um, I'll eat any. I think I know you and I have had one. Um, obviously, Stasio's does a great, great cold yes. sandwiches. Yes, I but like I, at Stasio's. That's not cold though. We had, I believe, you and I had one. Um, what was the name of the place? It's from Oviedo that you and I oh, went to. I love Cavallari. They yes. do a great um, mortadella. Yep. Hero, that's really good, mm-hmm. actually. Um, yep. They do great sandwiches there. You got to yep. go in the back there and they have like a whole, and don't, there's like two menus. Look at both of them because the first time I went there, I didn't realize that there was a second menu. And then I saw it while they were making my sandwiches. I was like, oh, I would have ordered this. He's like, you could have ordered that. Nice. So yeah, they what do a good about- sandwich there. The uh, And I, I won't take, because obviously we already talked, to, We uh, I'm kind of curious of, because Orlando had a whole bunch of places that sells this chicken sandwiches. Oh, what, uh, I know my what's, favorite what's your uh, what's your go to chicken sandwich place? Well, I haven't had it because, again, this would be one of those things. I don't get to go back to these places. I love them. But my favorite chicken sandwich holding is the hot butter 
chicken katsu sandwich from Sweet and Salty Island Grinds. That is the best chicken sandwich that I have had. And I have had a lot of really good chicken sandwiches. That is not, that is, you know, it's, it's one of those subjective things where you could go in any direction, but that sandwich is crazy good. It's got some spice. It's got a whole scoop of Mac salad on it. It's amazing. It's really good. For me, this one's a hard one because I do enjoy a good chicken sandwich. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be biased and pick my uh, my sandwich, Biggie Bon Me, at Gnarly Barley. Um, I won't I won't pick that one be, just because I, I think it's great and obviously has my name on it. I want to um, eat if, that sandwich with you. I feel like I, that's how you get the real Biggie Bon Me experience. I think, <laughs> I think maybe that should be a podcast episode eating yes, uh, eating be. a sand eating one of those. But I for me, if I had to pick one, I would either. Obviously, it depends on my mood. So I would either this is like one A, one B, or one A, one A. Um, I I can never say no to a jam hot chicken sandwich. I love his uh, sandwiches. Yes, and swine and suns. Coming up, by the way. Oh, yeah. the Chiang Mai chicken. Yes, at swine. So and that's sons. the reason they're two different flavors. That was on my list. There's two Definitely. different flavors, but that's those are the ones where I'm like, okay, what? Which one is it that I'm in the mood for? Do I want a little heat or do I want a little the extra spice, the spices? So those are those are for me definitely my uh, for like if I had to pick a category of like break it down, the chicken sandwich. Those are the those are the where I'm I'm kind of headed to. Well, we should um, do a field trip and we should go up to Sweet and Salty. And there is a sandwich place in Henry's Depot that I've never tried, like just sort of a regular deli. Uh, I have eaten there and we definitely should because it, it is good. Uh, it is a good sandwich. Uh, and that's like at, a more and, traditional yes, sandwich place. For sure. so. No, I'm all about I'm all about taking a field trip, uh, eating field trip with you. Um, I want to go over one more one more um, category. Obviously, there's there's a lot more um, on there that we'll go through in the future. But uh, the other f- other popular handheld um, food item, taco. I know uh, you picked Hunger Street taco. Love Hunger Street. I love Hunger Street because Hunger Street makes their own tortillas, and so and you don't sleep on any of the other stuff that's there too. Um, yeah. The soap base and all that stuff because the masa there is incredible. They make it from all different colors of heirloom corn and it's just it's a game changer when it comes to because you know a lot of places even if they have good tortillas it's it can be a little bit like an edible napkin Mm -hmm. you know and and there's really flavor in all of the corn there the readers selected uh i think the reader selected it was either hunger street or or I think it was either that or Black Rooster. Another was, uh, phenomenal Which taco is another, place. yeah. You Great really can't guac. go wrong with those. Yeah, no, you can't go wrong. Totally no, can't, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. And I know there's another place that you um that you've mentioned that you've been to as well that you really that you also liked. Um what was the name of it? Over the Over the Border. Yes. I recently tried their tacos, which are Tijuana tacos, which are different. Um, I'm learning all of these things. Um, Samuel, who uh, runs that pop up, and you can find them all over town. Check their Instagram. You'll see their story. Um, you can read about it in the Sentinel if you want. But they do a few pop ups a month. They're angling toward, you know, making it a more full time endeavor. But for now, you can get them, you know, two to four times a month, depending all over the city. And they use corn tortillas. And it's pastor, it's chorizo, it's asada. That's pretty much it. And you get a big scoop of guac on it and some hot sauce and onions and cilantro. And that's it. That's the style there. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's really good. I'm, I'm a guac fan, so I'm all about, you know, throw that on there. But really, really good. And it has to be, the food has to be cooked on a grill or, you know, on the trompo for the pastor, you know, so it has that real char Mm -hmm. grilled flavor, which you can't duplicate. You can't nope. duplicate that on a flat top. It doesn't do the same. I definitely had a blast. Uh, I love being able to have this conversation about um, the different foodie awards. I definitely want our listeners as you're listening to kind of, you know, give us, give us your picks, give us the picks. Yeah. Of I want your... new suggestions. Correct. And I think that's the key is the new suggestions. And I think those, that's the the big thing that we're trying to create with this is a community of people giving new suggestions, new places to eat, um, or sharing the places that you love to eat. Uh, you know, and, and, and just because it's not on the list, 
it just maybe didn't get nominated or, you know, and, and maybe it's time to kind of help tell your friends and other people that like a certain place to, to join forces and spread the word about all these wonderful places to eat. It would be great. What I've noticed um, in recent years is that increasingly there are readers' choices that are among my choices, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, to see places, you know, people voting for really good local places. It's really nice to see that. Yeah, no, I absolutely love it. And that's kind of one of the big things that um, I think it is great. And I love the fact of how you guys have decided to do the format for the Foodie Awards for Orlando Sentinel, just because of the fact that you now have uh, different talking points and it allows you to have people to have conversations on these topics, showcase them on these different, you know, different um, you know, categories, and then be able to also highlight them like the, what you're going to be doing. Uh, People and- have so- responded very positively. I've only gotten one person who was very nice about it, but did not, w- was not a fan, wanted, like the bigger one better. But everything, everybody else seems to be, um, you know, happy with the change, including, you know, restaurant owners who have said, oh, I yeah. think this is a good idea. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We got, you know, let's get a year in and see how it goes. Yep. And we'll definitely be hitting each one of these as we have different ones. I think it's a great topic to talk about when we have the different categories and the different court went as with the next one comes out. We'll definitely sit down and have a conversation about those um, because maybe it'll be some of our favorites or if not, we'll share some of the, you know, who we would have, well, obviously Amy, Amy Drew is going to tell you who it is because that's critics choice. Um, but I'll, I'll provide you with some, maybe who I, who I would have picked. Uh, I, love or it. I, I know that's what I love about this. So um, definitely another great show. Thank you so much for listening uh, to Amy Drew and I, and uh, we look forward to recording more of these and by all means, give us feedback. Tell us what you're thinking, what you like uh, places to eat and, and give us all of that stuff. What Thanks do you think Amy? Listening. Yes, thank you so much for listening. You guys have a good one, and we'll see you next week. See ya.